Hello, welcome to www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about my 32-bit uh, workflow that I do. Um, I made a, a comment on a couple videos ago about how I do not like uh, Photoshop's tone mapping uh, process, and I, I really don't like their HDR toning uh, that they've added, but I do like their 32-bit workflow. Uh, combined with Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm going to go ahead and go over that today. The first thing that you're going to do to do this is go into Edit, Preferences, and Camera Raw. And then down here, make sure that uh, the TIFF says automatically open all supported TIFF files. That's going to be important coming up in, in, in the future of this. Next thing you want to do is go to File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro, and then browse for where it is that your photos are. Uh, mine happen to be in this giant mess of photos here. So let me, give me a second here. Okay, now, one thing that I have noticed, especially with these sunrise and sunset pictures, is with 32-bit processing, is that it is very important to have five exposures. Um, for this one, uh, especially, I did uh, I did a, an experiment with the three exposures, the plus two, the minus two, and then the plus two, uh, plus one, minus one, minus two, and the zero exposure value, and I did get better results with all five. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all five of these, and press OK, and OK. And now we're just gonna let uh, Photoshop do its thing. It's gonna go ahead and slam all these together and make us a nice little HDR image. It's still working. It's taking some time. We'll, we'll let it take its time. It's doing a good job. Good job, Photoshop. Good job. Okay. So now we have our, uh, I guess our intermediary file um, that's coming up here in the Merged HDR Pro dialog box. If you don't have 32-bit selected from the last time we did a 32-bit image, it's going to default to something like 8-bit or 16-bit. So go ahead and change that to 32-bit, and you're going to realize all those crazy uh, tone adjusting sliders go away that I don't really care for anyway. It's always a good idea to remove ghosts. If there are any ghosts, this was a landscape photo. There wasn't much wind that day, but I'm going to go ahead and remove ghosts anyway, just in case some of the blades of grass were moving. And this is your exposure range here. Um, you know, going from the uh, the way positive, you know, the plus ten to the minus ten. And I've done experiments before too, where I take uh, and go ahead and press OK by sliding this slider all the way to the right, or just going to where the tone curve just kind of ends. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, when you bring it into uh, Camera Raw during this workflow, both of them are going to look the same. So go ahead and press OK. Now this is going to create a 32-bit file. And at this point, we aren't going to be able to do anything with it. What we're going to need to do is go to, uh, before you even do any editing, just go to File, Save As, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just save this to my Experiments folder. And I'm going to save it as a TIFF. And we'll just call this 32-bit TIFF. And right here, it's gonna it's gonna automatically select 32-bit float. Just go ahead and leave it the way it is, and press OK. All the defaults you can just leave the same. So now I need to open that that file. We can go ahead and close this now. I don't want to save changes. I already did. And now because this is a TIFF file, I just went ahead. Uh, what you didn't see here is in my folder here. I went ahead and clicked that 32-bit file that I had already saved. Because we had reset our uh, Camera Raw settings to accept TIFF files that are supported in Camera Raw, it's going to bring it to Camera Raw before it does anything. So here's what we're going to do like our pseudo technique that we would normally do with an HDR photograph. And you start that pseudo technique pretty much by uh, immediately dropping the highlights and increasing the shadows and seeing what you get. And then you start working with the, con the the clarity and maybe the contrast and maybe the exposure a little bit just to kind of see what you're getting. And then you can adjust the whites and blacks accordingly. Uh, and you're not going to see much change right now, and that's okay uh, because we're going to do something else in, in, in a minute here. You can go ahead and increase the vibrance if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and keep it uh, pretty conservative. What I don't suggest doing is uh, any noise adjustments right now because for some reason um, the luminance... Uh, interaction with a 32-bit file, it makes for some really crazy looking effects. Um, it really starts to just kind of 
blur everything together as opposed to reduce your noise. So I'm going to go ahead and drop all this back down to zero and press open image. So now what I'm going to do is go to edit uh, image mode and then make this a 16-bit file. So it was a 32-bit file. We took that 32-bit file right into Photomatix, or not Photomatix, sorry, into Adobe Camera Raw. My apologies, all these HDR programs getting in my head. Now we're going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF. So go ahead and save as, and now we'll do this 16-bit TIFF. And press OK, just leave the defaults the same, and close this out. Now I can open up that 16-bit TIFF, and you'll notice that all of my slider adjustments have now been reset. And this is where you get an even more crazy 32-bit HDR image. Now we went from 32-bit, got all the great qualities out of 32-bit, stretched it as far as it could go, saved it uh, well, as far as Adobe Camera Raw would let us go, saved it as a 16-bit file, and now we have the ability to do it all over again. So we can go ahead and drop those highlights again, increase those shadows, increase that clarity, and then start playing again and increase the contrast, maybe increase the vibrance a little bit, saturation a little bit. So, that's what we came in here with. Now we're getting a little bit more into it. So now we can go ahead and, um, at this point, if you're gonna do any uh, noise adjustments, I would do it now on the 16-bit file because it doesn't tend to have as drastic of a change or a difference on the luminance in this one as it did in the 32-bit image. So now we can continue to post-process this one even further. Um, there's a lot that you can do with this. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. First things first, I do not like what happened to my sun in my sunrise. This is the key player in this whole game, this whole sunrise game, and I don't like what it's done to my sun here. Now, typically a sun is going to be a highlight blowout, so go ahead and let it be a highlight blowout. But this, uh, to me, is just it's not working for me. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Um, and what I'm going to do is go back to the, duplicate the background layer, highlight this whole area with your patch tool, and then move it over and select an area around it and press Control D. So now we don't have any of that nastiness that was going on with the sun, but we also don't have a sun. You know, we kind of took our sun out completely. So what I'm going to do is select an area around here with my color picker. I want them brighter. Let me make it a brighter yellow. Let me go ahead and make it like okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get my brush and just hit that real quick and lighten that area up. Now we still don't really have a sun yet, right? So now I'm going to press the left bracket key, get a little bit smaller, and then press D for default to get my default colors back, and then X to get back to white. You can see my palette just changed back to white, and then click right there and see what that does for us. Okay, so now we kind of have ourselves uh, what that sun would look like. We can even make it a little bit bigger if we wanted to also. Go ahead and hit it again. Um, I'll do that on a new layer. I'll hit it again on, on a new layer. And then just go ahead and drop the uh, opacity a little bit. Okay. So now we've got that, that uh, sunrise look, um, which let's go ahead and zoom into that and, and see what we've done here. That's what it looked like coming out of our processing. Uh, that's after we use the content aware or the uh, patch tool, which is kind of like content aware. And then we modified our sun to make it look like a sun that was coming up from the background now, not like this crazy weird digital thing that uh, nobody's seen before. So now what I'm gonna do is press Control Shift Alt E. That would be uh, Command Option Shift E on a Mac computer. And I'm gonna change this to soft light. And what that does is it, it just kind of heightens up everything for me. But I like what it did to the sky. It gave me a little bit more uh, oomph in that sky of the sunrise. But I don't like what it did to the bottom area. So that's not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and get my quick selection tool and select out this bottom area here that I don't like what it did. Go back to here and hit the mask tool. So whatever select that is going to stay. So that's fine. We're going to go ahead and click that, and it's going to make the, the background go away. But if I press Control-I on that mask, we now get uh, what we had before for the, for the sun. So for me, it's easier to select the area that I want um, to stay the same. 
hit the mask even though I know it's gonna do um, the reverse and then just go ahead and invert that uh, that mask later so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some dodging and burning because um, that's one of the things that we're kind of losing in photography these days is dodging and burning we still have like a, a flat image here so there's there's definitely some things we can do for dodging and burning and I have an action for it um, but I'll go ahead and show you how I do that I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer press shift F5 and fill this with 50% gray. Then I'm going to change that to something like overlay or soft light. Um, either one will work fine. And I'm going to press B for the brush key if it'll work. Um, let me see here. Okay, B for the brush key. And now anywhere I paint in white is going to be a um, dodge. And anything I paint in brown, uh, sorry, black is going to be a burn. Um, so sometimes I like to duplicate these layers and call this one. Um, burn and this one dodge you can do this on both layers um, as you're cycling through uh, you know you're doing your dodging and burning I would select I would definitely suggest dropping the opacity of your brush to something like 15 or 20 percent especially when you're doing your burning because it tends to burn really fast and then I'm gonna paint on this layer with black in the areas that I want to kind of come, I want them to kind of go back to being shadows. I mean, one of the things that we do in HDR photography is, um, is uh, we open up our shadows a lot and start to lose some of the depth in an image. And it's really important in HDR photography to go ahead and start doing this dodging and burning on some of these shadow areas that should be shadow areas. You know, these areas were shadows to begin with, but we went ahead and destroyed them, um, these nice, healthy shadow areas. Um, one of the things I forgot to do in a camera wall was go ahead and select chromatic aberration uh, um, the adjustment there to get rid of chromatic aberrations that would have been a nice thing to do so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing here um, those are, you can see those areas as I click on and off how they're um, they're really starting to look better in those areas we get these kind of haze here and I don't really like the haze that's happening there um, and that back so I'm going to reduce my brush size and just start painting away again at that area. I really should have reduced chromatic aberrations. That's not a big deal. I can do that later. There are quite a few chromatic aberrations here, and there's many ways to deal with chromatic aberrations. Uh, so that's looking pretty good there. Let's go ahead and do our dodge. Actually, burn. One more thing I want to burn is that cloud up there. I want to kind of see what's going to happen if I if I burn that cloud. Just give that cloud a little bit more depth. There we go. And you can get creative with it. Oops, I don't want to do that. Let's go to our dodge tool now. So we can press X to switch to the dodge tool and start dodging areas that should maybe come out a little bit more. I mean, these, these areas are being blasted by the sun. They should be coming out just a little bit more. We lost that in, our, in the HDR processing. Um, uh, we can dodge this out too underneath here kind of that area around that sun. We're kind of dodging some of our, yeah, dodging some of the places that we already burnt, but that's okay. Um, but you can see as you start painting with that dodging and burning, you can really start to pull in some areas that, uh, that were kind of lost in that tone mapping process. Let's see, what else can we do with this here? Oh, and the last thing, of course, um, to get this a little bit more uh, HDR-ish looking, I can press Control shift alt e again change that to soft light, go to filter, go to other, go to high pass, and kind of put a high pass sharpen layer on it to kind of bring out some of the detail a little bit more in that image too. That's kind of what this whole HDR process is all about, right? So there we go, we have um, our, let's see what our original 32-bit image looked like. Um, go ahead and set this back to the default. There was our original 32-bit, and here's some of the work that we've done to it. So that's kind of how I do my my 32-bit workflow with uh, with Photoshop and uh, Camera Raw. And there's a plethora of things you can do after this. I just showed you a little bit about dodging and burning to bring back some of the depth in the image, but you can continue on even going even further. Um, you know, there's obviously the the typical curves adjustment that you can do here. You know, the, the S curve and kind of bring some of that back to some of the depth back in the image by just making that very slight S curve, uh, which always 
uh, tends to add a little bit more boosty contrast to your image too. So um, that was your 32-bit workflow everyday HDR style. Uh, stay tuned. There's more on the way uh, every week. Uh, have a great weekend and play with some of this 32-bit processing. It can get a lot of fun, especially when you do the dual 32-bit uh, to 16-bit uh, TIFF processing in Adobe Camera Raw. Have a great weekend. Again, this is Everyday HDR, and I'm Blake Rudis. Take care.